Do you live with diabetes and are you thinking about getting a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor, or maybe you already have one and you're kind of debating whether or not it's the right choice for you? Well, look no further, this video is for you. Because in this video, I and some very special guests will be discussing the different CGM options, which ones we prefer, and maybe even more importantly, why we prefer them. I'm Christelle from Diabetes Strong, and I've been living with type 1 diabetes since 1997. That means I've been managing my blood sugars with insulin for over 25 years. And I've been using a CGM to help me do that successfully since about 2013, 2014. I started out using the Medtronic and Light CGM, and then I moved on to Dexcom. I started out on the Dexcom T5, moved to G6, and I'm currently transitioning over to Dexcom T7. I've also in the past had the opportunity to try out Freestyle Libre 2, as well as Freestyle Libre 3. So I pretty much tried all the CGMs available in the US except for the Eversense CGM. I don't believe there's one CGM that'll be the perfect fit for everyone. And in my experience, all of the CGMs available have their pros and the cons. So I believe that we each have to weigh out those pros and cons for ourselves, and thereby choose the CGM that's best for us. Before we dive in, I have to say we lucked out. I have four great contributors from the diabetes community will all send me videos discussing their favorite CGMs and their experience with, well, CGMs in general. So you'll see that content throughout this video. Please, once you're done watching this video, go show them some love, go to their Instagrams, go to their YouTube. I will leave links to those down in the video description. And as I said before, I don't believe there's one CGM that's gonna be the right one for everyone. Um, so this video is in no way meant to sway you one way or the other. And I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. My name's David Ahn, I'm an endocrinologist and I love helping people learn about diabetes technology. I'm a big believer in choice, so I actually have patients on all the major CGMs on the market, including the Dexcom G7, the Freestyle Libre 3, and the Eversense E3. Dr. Ahn mentioned the Freestyle Libre, which I believe is the most widely used CGM globally. I've tried both the Libre 2 as well as the Libre 3. I didn't like Libre 2 too much. I found it to be somewhat inaccurate, but that doesn't mean that others don't love it. I'm Ginger Vieira. I've lived with type 1 diabetes since 1999, and I wear the Libre 14 day CGM. It's not even continuous, and I love it. I literally have to scan my sensor with my phone in order to get my blood sugar reading. That's what I love about it. I've used the Dexcom CGM, several variations of it, and it was awesome. I learned so much about my diabetes from the years that I wore Dexcom, especially during my pregnancies. It was so helpful, but I got really burnt out on being alarmed at and beeped at and ah, your blood sugar's rising, ah, your blood sugar's dropping. And I was starting to make panic decisions with insulin or carbs because of the arrows and the beeping. So for the last couple years, I have been using this flash BGM and I love it. Yes, I have to scan my arm many times a day, but for me, I'm willing to do that if it means I don't have to deal with the anxiety of the arrows and the beeping and the alarming and the alerting. I know it's not the fanciest tech that exists in CGM land, but for me, it's exactly what I need. As you can hear, Ginger is a huge fan of the Freestyle Libre CGM, specifically the Libre 2, because it doesn't give her continuous reading. She actually has to scan the sensor to see her blood sugar. Interestingly enough, I had to ask another diet buddy you know, what was his reasoning for not using the Libre anymore. And it's probably not the reason you think. Hi, my name is Victor. I am 31 years old. I live in Norway and I have type 1 diabetes. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in January of 2005. So I've almost had it for 20 years now. For this CGM, I use the Dexcom G6. I have tried Libre in the past, but I wasn't that satisfied with it. The reason for that is because I work in the metal industry and I have to wear so much protective gear that the scanning of the Libre doesn't go through my clothes. With the Dexcom, you don't have to scan, so 
that is my personal reason for using the Dexcom instead. And also I have experienced that it's less fragile than the Libre. But this is just personal opinions and maybe you guys have another opinion. And that was Richard's take. As I mentioned, I have tried Libre 3 in the past and I did find it to be a pretty good upgrade from Libre 2. I really like the size of the Libre 3. It's tiny. It's the smallest CGM available. I didn't love that it can't be calibrated. And also, I didn't really appreciate how basic the alarm settings are. So I asked Dr. Ahn, what are some of the reasons why some of his patients would choose a Freestyle Libre over one of the other options? Being the smallest and most affordable CGM on the market, the Freestyle Libre 3 is a great entry point for people that are brand new to continuous glucose monitoring. It's the easiest to set up and it's great for people with type 2 diabetes who are just kind of learning CGM and trying to learn how their body responds to different foods and activity. It's important to know that the Libre 3 now no longer needs to be scanned every time you want to get a reading. It actually transmits the blood sugars continuously, wirelessly, just like the other CGM on, CGMs on the market. Therefore, it's a great option for people that like the Dexcom, but can't necessarily afford or want to pay for the higher price of the Dexcom. My preferred CGM is the Dexcom CGM. I started the Dexcom G5 in around 2015. Then I switched over to Dexcom G6 about a year after it became commercially available in the US. I've also tried Dexcom G7, actually finally picked up my first three month prescription and I'll be switching over completely to the G7. The reason why I prefer the Dexcom CGM is I find it to be really accurate. I really appreciate how you can adjust the alerts to fit just you and the reporting is stellar, but there can be different reasons why people might prefer Dexcom. So don't just take my word for it. The Dexcoms are kind of like the Apple iPhone of CGMs. They're more expensive, but they also were kind of the first to revolutionize the market. And they have a really polished app experience, and they actually have an Apple Watch app as well. Since the G6 is the only app that integrates with the Omnipod 5 and Tandem Control IQ pumps, of course, this is the one to go for people using those pumps. The amazing app user experience plays a really big role for people, especially with type 1 diabetes, who are making constant important decisions on how much insulin to take and what to do next. So I think the Dexcom G7 and G6 are fantastic options for people with type 1 diabetes. I like Dr. An's comparison of the Dexcom to the iPhone. It is expensive and it has all the bells and the whistles and not everybody needs that, obviously. Um, but I thought it'd be fun to also talk to someone who's pretty much tried all the CGMs available, including some of those available outside the US, just to get a different perspective. My name is Tom. I'm a type 1 diabetic. I've been type 1 for 35 years, was diagnosed at the age of 3. Now I'm 38 years old, although I look much younger, I know. What CGM I've used before and which one I prefer? I've used them all. I've used Freestyle Libre, Dexcom G6, Dexcom G7. I've used uh, the Cybionics CGM, which is quite new. It's a Chinese CGM, which is not yet approved in most of the Western markets. But I tried that one too. It's not bad, by the way. My daily driver is, of course, the Dexcom G6. I think it's uh, my all-time favorite because it's the one that integrates with most of the um, automated insulin delivery system and things like that that I like to use. I got it here in my upper arm, of course, exactly where it's approved. Uh, so no off-label use. And uh, why I like this one, I think I touched on that before. It's just, I think right now the best all around CGM. It's a little bit bigger than some of the newer ones, but it works with all the systems. But response to your question, Dexcom G6 all day long. It's my favorite all around CGM and likes guys. If you're watching this, hit like and subscribe to the amazing Diabetes Strong YouTube channel because that's where it's at. Crystal is great.
Thanks, Crystal, for the opportunity, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao. Freestyle Libre and the Dexcom CGMs are probably the most well-known CGMs, but there are also other options available, um, such as the Metronic CGM. That's the first sensor I use. I use the N-Lite, and I didn't hate it. I really like the form of the Metronic CGM. So it's really, it has smooth edges. That means for me, I didn't get caught on things when I was wearing it. It didn't come off that easy. But the main downside was for me, it was really inaccurate. Again, it was years ago though. CGMs have, you know, improved. I know that. But also the Metronic CGM requires calibration and it doesn't integrate with anything outside the Metronic product portfolio. But that's just my opinion. And I would have loved to include uh, a Medtronic user's opinion, preferably somebody who loves it, but that was surprisingly hard for me to find. So if you use a Medtronic CGM, if you're sitting at home going like, well, Chris Dell, you should have asked me, please leave a comment down below. I know I would love to hear it. I'm sure the other viewers would as well. Let us know why you love your Medtronic CGM. Since I don't have a user, we do have an endocrinologist. So let's ask Dr. Ahn, you know, why people might want to choose the Medtronic CGM. The Medtronic Guardian Connect system is at a little bit of an awkward time in its life cycle. The new one is just around the corner, probably going to be coming out in the next year or so. And it really lags behind a bit in terms of functionality compared to the Libre 3 and the Dexcom G7. It has a shorter wear period of just seven days. You have to calibrate it at least two to four times a day. And the overall insertion process is just a little bit more painful and clunky than that of the Libre or Dexcom systems. As a result, the only people I really recommend use the Medtronic Guardian system are those that are tied to the Medtronic ecosystem. So if you're using a 670G or a 770G, to use the auto mode feature, you have to use a Medtronic Guardian system. Apart from that, I really would recommend looking at one of these other three sensors on the market. The last CGM I want to talk about is the Eversense. It's an implantable CGM. It gets implanted underneath the skin and it lasts for 180 days, so six months. Uh, I haven't tried it. There's a few reasons why I haven't tried it. One being that it's implantable. You have to go into the doctor's office every six months to get it replaced. And further, it also requires calibrations. The need for calibrations is a real no-go for me. Uh, but I know others who love their Eversense. So I know it has some upsides as well. Some people often find that they might have really bad skin reactions to the adhesives on these CGMs, or they might find that the accuracy for them for whatever reason just doesn't seem up to snuff, or maybe the sensors aren't lasting the full 10 to 14 days. That's where the Eversense E3 might come in handy because it's a small, tiny sensor that gets implanted under the arm. For, and it sits there for 180 days. With the Eversense E3, the sensor sits under the skin, but you still do have to calibrate it, and you do have to wear a transmitter over the skin. But one neat thing about it is that if you need to take it off, you can actually just peel off the transmitter and put it right back on. That makes it the only CGM that's actually removable. And I find that some of my younger patients like the flexibility of that option because they might be a little bit more shy about displaying their diabetes or they, like, they sometimes like to take it off in certain instances, whether they're playing sports or hanging out with their friends. I also find older patients who have certain jobs that make it so that they can't wear their CGM all the time, like the ability just to be able to pop off the CGM, put it back on when they need it. So there you have it. I think it's really important that different people will do better with different sensors. And that's what's amazing about having so many options on the market. I hope this video gave you a little bit more clarity on the pros and the cons on the different CGMs. So which one is your favorite and why? If you want to know more about the latest CGM, so that being Libre 3 and Dexcom G7, check out these two videos. If you like this video, please give it a like, leave me a comment and hit that subscribe button and come back to my channel and watch more videos on the different CGMs. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.